I, I guess with this prolonged dry spell now ahead of us, it's beginning to feel a yeah. bit more like 1976. A little bit, yes, I guess it is. Um, except there's a couple of sharp spikes that we had last, uh, well, three weeks ago with the 40 degree. We never got to that sort of height back in 1976. Um, I kind of remember it as a young teenager, uh, 1976, sitting in the street day after day after day. Um, I guess now looking at the, and especially, the, obviously, this is southern England and, and southern Wales more than it is the, the north of the country, but nonetheless, it's, uh, it's got a similar tone to it. Let's, let me put it that way. Yeah, no, it does certainly feel that way to me, and I remember it extremely well, I must say. Now, big campaign, fire chiefs now saying that not just disposable barbecues should be banned, but urging people not even to have outdoor barbecues on their patios or elsewhere. Um, that, I think, is going a little bit too far, but just give us some assessment of where you see water levels in southern England and elsewhere as we face some quite substantial hosepipe bans coming in from this Friday. Yeah, sure. Going back, you've got to go back to the winter, actually, because it starts. This is not a, a, a short thread, if you like. This didn't happen yesterday or even a couple of weeks ago. This goes all the way back to the winter time and then through a very dry spring um, and equally dry early summer. And we've arrived now and some of these areas that we're talking about and you're showing pictures of the very brown grass, if it does exist at all, it's probably all dead. Um, no, this is this is this is really not. It's, it's kind of crept up, up on us in a way, but it's kind of gone on and on and on without any uh, meaningful rainfall whatsoever. And looking forward, um, I actually don't see the models are not seeing anything going forward now for another seven to ten days in the south. Uh, maybe by next Monday we'll start to see a bit of rain in the north. Again, so it's the southern counties, really, roughly from the wash down to Bristol Channel that, that will probably arguably miss this, um, the, the areas that most need it. So the drought continues and it will only get worse. And those barbecues, by the way, the fire, the fire um, prevention people, they're right. They're, they're absolutely right. We've got to do everything to stop. I noticed today in the Chilterns in Buckinghamshire, uh, where I live, uh, fires breaking out. And, and sadly, there'll be more to come. And they, 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 do, they do cause a lot of problems on the roads and other places. So and with a bit of wind blowing as well, Nigel, you're going to see, uh, how do you use the word wildfire? Because that's probably the right terminology when these, uh, when these fires start to rage. So it's all ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah, no, we've got to be sensible. Absolutely, I agree with that. And, and, and maybe the restrictions will get even worse. Now, there are some saying that despite the fact we saw this in 1976 and we saw it in 1911 and there have been other hot, dry summers with many droughts, is this all climate change in your view, Jim? I knew you'd get on to that one. Um, uh, let, me, let me say this. A single, a single uh, event you can never put down to climate change per se. So, so in other words, the fact we've gone through a drought, we did in 1970, you can't say, well, that's climate change. However, the trick is to join the dots. That's what we do in this job as a meteorologist and climatologist. That's what we do. Now, if you're joining the dots, you've got to look globally. Climate change does not just exist in the UK. Uh, such. It's, it's a global thing. So look at America. Look at uh, what's happened in the rest of Europe or good parts of the rest of Europe. Look what's happened in, in, in uh, Japan, for example. I'm talking about the extreme temperatures that have been seen. Uh, go to the southern hemisphere in wintertime, record-breaking uh, record temperatures in, in, in the winter in New Zealand. You join those dots, it points in one direction and one direction only, along with the data that yeah. goes with it. Uh, and that is the climate change that comes okay, in. So well, this event would have happened. It's just it's just been accelerated uh, with it. If you if you see what I'm saying. Well, help me with one thing because I was flying back from America overnight and reading the New York Times, and a big screaming headline: three downpours in eight days. How extreme rain soaked the Midwest. Thirty nine people died in the Midwest over the course of the last few days, and definitively. Definitively, the New York Times saying that because of warming temperatures, there is more moisture in the atmosphere and we will get much, much heavier rainfall. Which is it? Is climate change giving us floods in the Midwest or drought in southern England? I'm confused. It's an easy one. It's both. 
It's exactly right what the New York Times has said in terms of when you put more energy, more molecules, those molecules move faster. Uh, they contain more more energy and therefore they've got the capacity to suck up more moisture and then drop more moisture. So it's a catch-22. You both get the drought and then you get the deluge. And to be frank with you, probably, arguably, come the, come the uh, end of the summer here, we'll probably end up with a few floods ourselves. That's what happened in 1976 in September. My guess is it will probably happen again, but it is both.